Hello everyone, welcome to Craving Solutions. So this video today is going to be showing you guys how to move over from an iPhone to, to a OnePlus or OnePlus Open. And this uh, method is probably gonna work for many different phones, but in this particular uh, demonstration that we're gonna show here, it's just gonna be showing you how to move from an iPhone to a OnePlus Open. Uh, I've been an iPhone user for a very long time. Uh, this is just a big change for me. Uh, but um, I think it's time. Uh, the biggest thing that's made me want to change lately is they re I travel and they remove the ability to have SIM cards within the iPhone. Uh, some of the things that I I've kind of just written them down here, but some of the things that I um, kind of just really have always hated about the iPhone um, is I can't like pause a video recording. I can't switch between the main camera and uh, the, uh, you know, the selfie camera within recording. Um, uh, the zoom has been um, usually much better on all, uh, on Samsungs. Uh, they don't have a fingerprint reader. Uh, this was terrible during the COVID days. Um, but uh, and you know uh, it's very bad because um, when they did the whole like using your watch to uh, you know basically if you have your watch on, uh, well if anybody had your camera they could open up your phone. Uh, you can't do all uh, multitasking. Uh, there's just so many things uh, that, in my opinion, just did not work very well. So um, let's go continue with the main purpose of this video. So the instructions here, um, this is me doing it for the first time. So it's a walkthrough with you guys. Um, and it's set to just connect your phone. Basically, that show, it shows even the lightning cable has a picture of it with, with the new phone. And we're going to see how this will work. I've never tried this before, obviously. So we're just going to see what happens. We're going to hit next here. And now they're both connected. I don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to see. Okay, so it's asking if I want to trust this computer. One thing that I wanted to mention is it's actually showing that it's charging the phone. Okay, that didn't show up before, so I think the cable was not in. Good. This this cable is a little finicky sometimes, um, but anyway, let's um, let's continue here. One moment. Let me just put in the code. Okay. Now it's saying the devices are connected. I've never done this before, so we're gonna see how you know horrible of how easy of a process this is uh, obviously next thing it's wanting you to do is log into Google as you guys see on the screen so I'm just gonna do that Google. okay so right now we have uh, I mean the, as soon as I entered the information this is basically what it did so as soon as I logged in I mean it, ha it went through terms of service and stuff like that so I just agreed to all the terms of service and everything like that but now it's saying get, getting ready to copy so we're going to pause um and if anything changes i'll let you guys know uh but this is basically what happens next after you guys do that okay so basically um now that it's done with this step um and actually one important thing is to keep the phone always open uh it would pause whenever the screen would close um so if, there, if you have a way to keep that basically the screen always on through an app or whatever, you keep the screen always on. Uh, in any case, it said it's gonna take an hour and seven minutes. It's got all the apps, contacts, photos, videos, uh, music and other messages, uh, message attachments, calendars, notes, um, settings. So all the stuff is on here. I, I don't know if it's gonna like move the passwords and stuff like that. Uh, obviously things like uh, Apple Pay and things like that are not gonna be probably moved over. Uh, but uh, again, I'm just showing you what the process is like. Uh, I'll try to see if at the end of this video I can um, go over some things that I noticed did not get moved that might be important to be moved. Um, again, this is my first time doing something like this. Uh, but we'll we'll start the process and uh, we'll we'll continue after it's done. Okay, so at this point, it's asking uh, for um, a QR code basically to be scanned by WhatsApp. So it's saying that um, some applications will need steps like this. So basically you just go over step by step. I'm sure a lot of people do have WhatsApp. So uh, I'm just gonna go on here, um, open up, and uh, it's just gonna say this. Um, and then you just start. Again, just follow every single step along the way. 
Um, and again, if there's anything that happens along the line that I think is going to be useful to you guys, um, I'll add it in here and we'll keep going. Okay, so some more steps uh, that it's asking us to do. Again, not, nothing very major or anything like that. So we're just going to um, hit accept. I'm um, just going to skip this for now. And uh, yeah, we're going to continue. Okay, so that's it for now. Okay, so again, once you once you've gone through the few other steps, uh, it just so the WhatsApp was the only app that required any manual uh, QR codes in it so far, and then it just continuing to move data. One thing I do recommend, uh, I don't know how to stop it right now. Maybe somebody could share that in the comments or something. But uh, right now it's basically charging my iPhone. I mean, we started with like 36 or 37, but I'm at 15% down to 14 as I speak. I don't think this is going to finish moving. Uh, this is very unfortunate. So what I want to uh, encourage you guys all to do is make sure your phone is basically at 100% before you start, because especially for an hour plus uh, transfer, uh, you're going to want as much uh, battery as possible. Um, at this point, I'm going to have to... Um, interrupt it uh, and let it charge before I can continue, uh, unfortunately. Okay, guys, next step. Um, so again, I'm just going to mention this again. Uh, please make sure both phones are charged because even though I got this thing nearly to 100%, it is now at 8%, but this because this battery was pretty low. Okay, so make sure that you guys are doing your part in making sure that both of them are charged before you start. Okay, so it's done. It said it's done. Um, it showed everything here is done. Um, and then we're gonna hit done here. Now it, it's mentioning some things. It's saying that something could be missing. Missing, it could be on your iCloud. Uh, you know, and it gives instructions on how to do that. Uh, calendars, music, etc. Uh, but so far, uh, this is pretty much all we have to do. Uh, we're just gonna hit okay here. Now it says turn off iMessage. Uh, and I'm guessing that some people uh, may have their phone set to like send send you iMessages, so you you want to turn it off so you, so that when they are responding to you, you get your you get their messages. Okay, now just uh, basically saying that it's getting things ready, and this will take a few minutes. Okay, and then here just going to talk about the navigation. Uh, I'm going to try the gestures, but I I don't know if I'm going to like that. Actually, we'll see how that works. And now it's Mac talking about Quick Connect. And now we just hit get started. Okay, everyone. So there's a few things that I needed to share. It's been a couple of weeks now. And uh, there's some things that I noticed right off the bat. Like, for example, the notes. I thought the notes didn't move, but they actually did. Um, my notes were empty, but it ended up going in Keep Notes instead. So if you guys had notes and they were important to you, uh, look for them in your regular notes and also one thing that is bothersome is keep notes does not sh uh, the way it sorts things it's not by when you last did a note so it's going to be a little bit bothersome for for some of you because you would literally have to copy and paste every single note to go from the keep notes to your regular notes i've had to do that with a few because i hated the way it sorted and showed me uh my notes in the keep notes so that's just something to uh, to keep in mind uh, another thing also you have to keep in mind, obviously, is uh, not all apps uh, save everything on the cloud. Before you get rid of your other phone, I highly recommend that you go through every single app, especially the ones that are important to you, and make sure that everything that you had on there moves over to your new device, okay? Uh, so just double check all of them. Uh, I can't think of any examples right now, but there are some apps that just don't save to the cloud. And they might even have an option to save to the cloud, uh, but you guys just didn't enable it. And so that, that's an example. Uh, another thing that I liked um, uh, that I think was be would be very helpful, I downloaded another app called Canary. And one of the reasons why I liked it is because when I'm mass uh, choosing emails, like I would just left, uh, you know, tap and leave my finger. And then I can just continue doing this. That's a feature that I used to like on my uh, iPhone. Uh, that I thought I was going to have to go without on uh, Android because their native app doesn't do that, the Gmail app. So this is something that's uh, going to be useful for some of you as well. Another thing that uh, that you guys are going to want to set up is obviously your, um, it won't be Apple Pay, but it'll be your Google Pay or Samsung Pay. Um, I went and got myself a uh, Samsung Pay watch. 
so this way um, I was able to still use my watch to pay for things uh, when I'm checking out um, and things like that. Uh, there is a way um, here I'm going to show you guys really quick. If you want to go to settings, um, you can change the default. You go to connections and then you go to NFC and contact, uh, contactless payments. And then you change from Samsung Pay, you just tap that and you can change to Google Pay. So de depending on your preference, obviously you might want to change to, since this is not a Samsung phone, uh, it might make sense for you guys to use Google Pay because then it would be the same on both. Um, another thing that I would really highly recommend to make your life a little easier is that you reorganize all your apps to look like what you had on the iPhone. So that um, for, you know, a lot of us will rem kind of remember where certain apps were and certain icons were. So this will be very helpful for you guys if you guys organize it. One thing I did want to mention is, um, strangely enough, if you tap, for example, like I'm going to open up Fandango, for example, and I get out of it. Uh, I'll get out in a second. So it takes me somewhere else. I'm not, I'm no longer on the home page. I'm no longer on the main app drawer page. And the reason why this is, is because there's another like app uh, icon here. And what you do here is you just hit the X and this removes the shortcut. You only want, want one shortcut. You don't need multiple. And once you remove that every single time you'll be uh, taken to your main, uh, hold on one second you'll be taken to your main uh, app, you know, app selections here. Uh, one thing also that I um, notice here, like the calendar, the calendar here does not, uh, it doesn't show the, the day, like, or the, the, basically whether it's Tuesday, Monday, it doesn't show any of that. But when you look at uh, your actual, you could add widgets, like for me, like the weather widget shows me the day and um, the day and everything like that. So, Unfortunately, that's something that you guys are going to have to get used to a little bit because that's that's not, uh, you know, something that we were used to on the iPhone. Um, but basically, this is pretty much it. Um, you know, for me also, the passwords, uh, that's something that was a little bit of a bother. I, I used Microsoft Edge a lot, so all my passwords were saved already on Microsoft Edge, so that made it a little easier. But um, aside from that, uh, you guys... Uh, might want to use, I started using LastPass, uh, which was a good option uh, for password management on um, uh, on some of these apps. Um, and again, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys, uh, there is two things that I miss. I just wanted to mention, I guess, two things that I really miss. Um, is their face ID here doesn't work as good as the iPhone. It doesn't work like when it's pitch dark. Uh, obviously, it's only, you know, one little notch. So that's why they don't have all the components in here for, for the uh, face unlock to work uh, in the dark. And then, um, and then I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, have, I haven't regretted it yet. I've been using it for a few weeks now. And uh, hopefully this video is helpful to some of you uh, that were looking to switch from uh, basically an Apple you know, iPhone to a OnePlus or heck any Android, uh, this tutorial and these instructions could work for, you know, many other devices. But for my case, this was for the OnePlus Open and pretty much probably any other OnePlus uh, uh, device as well. Okay, thanks again for watching everyone. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Overall, this process wasn't that bad. I hope this video is helpful to many of you. As always, be sure to like, subscribe and comment. It motivates me to make more and more videos. Uh, this is a little bit different than most of my videos, but again, hopefully this is uh, helpful to many of you that are, uh, you know, looking into making the switch from an iPhone to a OnePlus uh, device. Uh, take care, everyone. Bye.